Hi, this is Jason from Elusive Disc. Welcome to another video in our Analog Basics series. Today we're going to be looking at cartridge specifications and what they mean for your system. If you're interested in other videos like this, please check out our Analog Basics playlist. It's in the description below. This video is for you if you're interested in learning more about cartridge specifications, you're in the market for a new cartridge or new turntable, or just want to learn more about what these things mean for your system. Okay, cartridge specifications. What do they mean and how are they relevant to my system? When deciding what kind of cartridge you want to get, whether or not it's a single cartridge for your table or a cartridge that's pre-installed on a table already, you want to make sure that some of the specifications match the amplifiers in your system. Okay, the first thing we're going to look at is output voltage. So all phono cartridges have an output voltage, and this is measured in millivolts. Why does this really matter? Well, in order to be heard, it has to be amplified up to line level. So if you don't have anything that can get your cartridge up to that line level for your amplifier, you're not going to be able to hear it properly. So for example, the output range typically goes from about 0.2 to 6.0. And moving magnet cartridges like this Clear Audio here, this Maestro Wood, has about 3.5 millivolts of output, while this Lyre Cleos has under 1 millivolt of output. In order to get those up to that level, you're going to have to run it through a phono amplifier. The phone amplifier is going to need an amount of gain to get these up to that level. The kind of gain you need really is around 40 to 60 decibels. You need in the 40s for a higher output cartridge like this, and you need around 60 or a little more for a lower output cartridge like this. Similar to gain, another specification that you need to know is resistive loading. This is something that's measured in ohms. Every cartridge, just like these two, are going to have a recommended loading that you need for your phono amplifier. Moving magnet cartridges load at 47k ohms, 47,000 ohms, and that's the kind of setting that your amplifier is going to have by default for that. Now, moving coil cartridges are a little bit different. They range typically from 100 to 1,000 ohms. The cartridges themselves are going to have a range that the manufacturer recommends. Sometimes in it, it is an exact number, we'll say 500 ohms, or it could be a range 400 to 1,000 ohms. So when selecting a cartridge, you want to make sure that your phono stage for the moving coil input, which would be for this, has the right loading setting. If it does not, it can definitely not sound correct. For example, let's say this Lyra Cleos here needs to load at 500 ohms. Your options are 1,000 for moving coil, or you have moving magnet, which is 47K. Will it sound okay? It'll probably sound okay but it's a little bit too high. You really need to be closer to the recommended loading for that. So it's a very important setting when you're going to decide if this cartridge will work for your system. The next two specifications we're gonna discuss aren't anything that you can change yourself, but these are things that are very important when looking at cartridges. So the first thing is channel separation. This is measured in decibels and it shows the amount of detail you can get between each channel. So the Maestro Wood here is at 28 decibels and the Cleos is at 35. So a, a relatively small difference, but for moving coil versus moving magnet, it's not surprising. Frequency response is the second thing we were going to look at. Frequency response is measured in hertz and it shows the potential range that a cartridge can reproduce. The Maestro Wood goes down to 20 hertz and up to 20,000 hertz, which is 20 kilohertz. And the Cleos goes down to 10 hertz and up to 50,000 Kilo, 50,000 hertz, which is 50 kilohertz. Moving coil cartridges should have a larger frequency response, which the Cleos does. This is to be expected, and these numbers are pulled directly from the manufacturer themselves. Cartridge weight. These cartridges weigh a specific amount. Why is that really relevant? If you're buying a table that has a cartridge already on there, it doesn't really matter that much. It matters if you're getting a brand new cartridge or if you're doing an upgrade. So for example, let's say this Cleos weighs 10 grams and the cartridge you have on your table right now is 8 grams. Will the table and arm work with the 10 gram cartridge? It depends. Uh, a lot of times you have to change out the counterweight. If you can't get enough tracking force, you have to add more weight to the back. Uh, and if you need to swap that out, will your manufacturer allow for extra counterweights? It really just depends. So something that's a very important thing to check. We do have several brands that have removable counterweights. You can put a heavier one on there. When you're selecting a cartridge, that's something that you want to check out for sure. The next thing relevant to that is tracking force. And like I mentioned, when you put the cartridge down, it's going to have a certain force on there. A tracking force is measured in grams. 
And if the tracking force on the record is too heavy, it can damage a cartridge, it can damage a record. And if it's too light, it won't play properly, it'll most likely skip. So the tracking force is usually a range. Again, the cartridge manufacturer will set a specific range for that. And we look at the Clios here, the range for that is 1.7 to 1.8 grams is what it recommends. While the Maestro actually tracks a little heavier at a recommended 2.2 grams and it can go plus or minus 0.3 grams. Vertical tracking angle is the last thing we're going to discuss today. So what is the vertical tracking angle? Well, it's literally the angle that the stylus hits the groove at and makes contact. Why does that really matter? Well, again, each cartridge will recommend a tracking angle that is best. But how is that determined? You can determine it in a couple ways. Having a microscope and being able to, to check it with a protractor is one way. Using a macro lens and doing it similarly is also a good way. But what if that's not possible? Well, there are some other things you can do. So the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you have it set up properly. And you want to use the alignment tool that came with your table. If your table did not come with one, then you definitely want to get either the one that the table should have come with or a universal one. And I have a couple examples to show you. This is a VPI alignment jig. It comes with the VPI tables. And if you happen to be buying a used VPI table, I definitely recommend getting one of these for the proper length. They do sell them in nine, 10, and 12 inch, depending on the arm you have. These have a little bullseye that the cartridge goes on. And when you do the alignment, that's really what you're looking for. And we will discuss more of that momentarily. This is a universal protractor, similar to the VPI. And you can use this on any table, you can use it on a straight arm or a curved arm. It does not make a difference. And again, you wanna put it in the bullseye here. And then once you get that on there and get the alignment done, now without the ability to set VTA with a microscope or a macro lens, you wanna use the alignment. And once the alignment is done properly, then if your arm has the ability to set VTA, you could actually raise and lower the arm. Recommend this happening after the cartridge is broken in. That typically takes between 40 to 100 hours. Once that's done, you can raise and lower the arm in small increments to see how it sounds. We recommend you do this with a song that you know really well because that way you can hear when the changes are made. Since I really like Pink Floyd, I do without any of them, but I would probably pick Wish You Were Here because it's my favorite. We definitely covered a lot of cartridge specifications in this video. Should you have any questions about anything in this video or any questions about anything in your system, please feel free to comment or contact us. We'll be happy to help you out. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Thank you.